Well, hello everyone. Good morning. Well, we're a couple of days out from the new year. We really want to take a look at anything. <laughs> anything. I'm just opening it up. I was going to look at the fool and then I thought, well, if the fool wants to show up, the fool will, will turn up. But I think honestly... At the, the empathic energy this morning is just overwhelming. Um, we found out today that um, poor Debbie Reynolds, my God, she finds out four or five days ago that her daughter had a heart attack on a plane Christmas Day. And then she grieved herself to death when her daughter died. It's, I'm just having empathic reaction, explosive empathic reaction. So we'll see how I take this reading, but I'm opening it up to anything. I'm just asking Spirit to show us something. Now, I'm going to show you something. I got two new, two new decks here. One is the Gilded Tarot by Ciro Marchetti. Marchetti, Marchetti, depends on whether you're in the States, or Alitalia. Um, I'm going to split these in half because these decks are quite large and my hands are quite small. So we're just going to do a little bit more mixing on our energy. I do have another deck here, guys. I'm very excited to bring it to you today. I have not seen any other tarot readers using this yet. So ooh, that feels good. All right. We're going to go with that on these. This is called The After Tarot. It's produced by Los Carabio. It is, I believe it's by a woman named Corinne Kenner. And what she has done here, along with the artwork of uh, Julia Francesca Masalia, what she has done here is taken the traditional tarot and advanced it to the very next minute. This card here is going to be our first. Oh, these are going to be our first two up. Oh, interesting. We're going to start with the Queen of Pentacles here. Now, the Queen of Pentacles stands here, and she holds her pentacle. And she, we know she's quite abundant, because look at that beautiful peacock that sits right over her head. We know that her art, her life is full of art and music and joy and happiness and abundance. This deck takes that card and shows this queen the very next minute. What does she do next? What happens next? Next to her is the Ace of Wands. Again, in the After Tarot, it takes a look at what happens to the Ace of Wands once this pair of hands has released it. Or in this interpretation, what happens next with this Ace of Wands? So, we know we have this big energy coming through here for us all with this Ciro Marchetti Gilded Tarot deck. But what's going to be interesting is what follows it up with the era after Tarot. Let's see what happens with that in a little bit. But first, let's see what we've got here. Now, <clears throat> the focus point here is the High Priestess. Now, we can be talking about each individual person on a personal level. Looking for a new way to look at things. Maybe you're walking out of 2016 with... Uh, hidden energy with 
unknown factors. Because she keeps secrets. She's very good at it. But she's also really intuitive. She's, uh, pardon me, very tuned in to her feelings. She's very tuned in to where she wants to go and what she wants to do. Now, I want to talk one minute, just a second, about the passing of Carrie Fisher and today her mother. And I think that that kind of love connection where especially with us mothers I don't care how old your child is whether they're six months, six years or sixty when you lose them sometimes it's just easier to carry on if you go with them and so I understand how that poor woman grieved herself to death told you I'm having an empathic nightmare of a morning I just wanted to say that those connections are there and they are pure. That came from the purest sense of love. And I think I am just so filled today with that that spirit of love. And so we're going to move on now. Okay. All right, here we go. Hmm, interesting what's on the bottom. But I'm not going to show it to you. Now, we want three more. Wow, these are very thick and still a little sticky. Well, guess who's here? The Emperor. This is about being in com being in command, being in control. Uh, this can talk about an individual, but we're not going to go there. This is like for the collective energy. So this is going to be maybe an authority figure. I almost want to say this is us as a collective moving through the new year, wanting to make necessary changes in our life because 2016 was an incredibly painful period for a lot of people. And we have the King of Swords, another very imperial kind of energy, very commanding. Uh, going into 2017 as a collective with a sense of self-command, with a sense of self-control. These two guys, almost for me, have the same kind of energy. They almost have the same kind of universal command. So we have a Huge command, and with this Ace of Wands, I see people wanting to take control of their lives very much here with the Queen of Pentacles, take control of their financial situations, and really drive forward quickly with the things that they desire. Because maybe 2016 was a sticky place. And I see a two here and a four here. So I'm going to say, oh, actually it's one five. So maybe since 2015, your life has seemed to be a bit stuck in position. And I almost feel that it has been a year for some of you, since you've had any real positive movement 
forward. So this really, for me, very much says that on a very, on a very collective level, we're using our own instincts. We're taking control of our finances. We're getting command on that. And we're trying to drive forward very quickly what it is that we're looking to accomplish. The emperor is very much in command. And the king of swords is very much the guy who looks at things with clarity, removes what does not work. He doesn't get emotional, like me, for instance. Today, I am not the king of swords. I'm probably the high priestess more than anything. And you'll pick out your own character, how you're moving into the next year. And the King of Pentacles. Now, this is the Queen's Mate. So, maybe you're walking into 2017. If you have a partner, that partner is probably in complete agreement on the changes, the developments that may need to come in 2017 to make it a better year. Some of the things that you need to take command on, maybe your finances, maybe... Your finances became a little unclear or there were some hardships and the King of Swords is removing that kind of clouded uh, outlook and changing the direction of where you go on a financial level. Like I said, we have the Eight of Wands here and the Eight of Wands is sincerely is sincerely about how quickly we get to our ultimate goal. Um, this is about rapid movement. So I think that some of you moving into this year are going to want things to happen quickly because maybe 2016 has been an incredibly a uh, painful, difficult year. The Seven of Wands. The Seven of Wands. See, I see this as facing your conflicts on, in this card. This guy has a lot of things coming at him. And it seems to me that some of those things may look like a struggle to him because he has a look of concern on his face. So we can say that maybe you're going into 2017 with some concern. Some concern over maybe what it is you want. Maybe concern that you want change to happen. But we know that change is going to happen. Becomes, it, it comes in here on the Ace of Wands. It, it, it's all carried in by this need to take command over a situation and sort of throttle it into control because you almost feel there's something around you that's kind of gotten away from you maybe, maybe gone off the rails a little bit. Maybe the kids are out of control or the spending is out of control. Or it's possible you just found out that that kid's education, that college education, is going to probably cost you another $5,000 next year because... The institution where you send your child has decided that they're just going to stick it to them real good this year under a Trump administration. So we've got financial command, absolutely clarity, especially around money for some of you. But it's also clarity around what it is that you want to accomplish in 2017. The high priestess is all about knowing. She's all about knowing, 
but she can keep a hell of a good secret too. So she can keep her plans to herself. If you are, if you are creating a plan and taking command because you're just kind of through with what 2016 had to offer you. You're getting a handle on what it is that you want to do. And you've got a certainty moving forward. Now, I think this part of the reading is really focusing more out around your finances, your home, your money. The world, a completion of cycle, is coming your way. It's all the com also the completion of the year. So we definitely have the right energy here. Uh, moving forward with what it is that we are desiring. Because the world delivers that. It completes the cycles, but it brings goodness and light and reward and accomplishment. So... Those things are all going to be delivered in 2017. And the Five of Swords. Now, some of you are going to have to let go of thinking that has kept you possibly tied up at a loss in fear, but in conflict in some way. This energy releases you from the sticky places in your life, from the thought processes that have gotten you nowhere. Because I look at these two people kneeling in the background in defeat as the negative thinking being dismissed. And now it's at its mercy. It no longer wants to serve you anymore. Because you're really kind of becoming more commanding of what it is that you desire in 2017. There's more clarity coming in 2017. There's a hell of a lot more clarity coming in 2017. Ace of Swords. This is truth, victory, honesty, completion, advancement. It cuts out the shit that no longer gets you anywhere. Okay. I think we've got this message. 2017 as far as money, family, advancement, home, security. I think 2016 was a tough year, but taking command as the emperor, and look at all of this royal energy we have working for us here. Not only do we have the emperor, but we have the high priest, this, the inter, inner wisdom, the queen of pentacles, and the king of pentacles. You embodying both characteristics or you and your partner embodying the same goals, the same drive, moving in the same direction, completions and new beginnings coming. But the world is the ultimate completion. So for some of you, this is really big um, incredibly uh, forceful change coming and really defeating the negative thinking that may have kept you back a bit in 2016. For some of you, justice is going to be served. We have the justice card. For some of you, this clarity may be around something legal in nature. But the justice card also brings the light of truth. 
So we've got this energy that um, not only will we have clarity of thought, accomplishment, a much uh, clearer vision of what it is that we want from 2017. Um, this is rights being made where there was a wrong. This is correcting. This is an energy that corrects past mistakes, that takes the things that you did or that someone else has done to you and brought justice to that situation. However that is, since I am talking about a collective energy here, that can resonate in any area of your life. And I'm going to take one last. Amen. The death card. The ultimate rebirth card. Um, the old dying off. And the new rising up. The... Um, Better life coming after the old life dies. It's about old negative behaviors being left in the dust and rising up out of the ashes like the phoenix because that's what this is about. This is conquering. This is conquering death, the death of a situation. And since you have a lot of things that look like we're culminating, uh, we've got new beginnings. We've also got um, what I feel is the ending. And, and uh, you know, underneath, we also had the sun. So we know that coming into 2017, what we have is this energy of rebirth. Um, because maybe there has been so much loss in 2016 that we only hope and God pray to, to the divine goddess above that the world has to change. Something has to change. Something has to change. Justice brings that change. And there is no more powerful energy to wield in the change, especially the change that tries to come in on this world, on the sun. Um, it can only get better. It can only get better next year. I'm, I'm really hoping that um, the collective, the universal energy is better now. That's what I see on a general level collectively for 2017. And I'll probably come back on New Year's Eve and do something for you guys. All right. The After Tarot. Uh, let's see what our After Tarot has. Now, I am just learning these. I've spent the past couple of days really digging in and studying the pictures and trying to figure out what the messages are sending me. I have not opened the book because I want the messages to kind of flow naturally through the um, images, through the imagery that's there. Okay, so. My hands are so sore. <laughs> it's this cold weather. I wish somebody... Hey, if there's an inv inventor out there, tarot card shufflers, please, someone invent one. Because our cards don't fit standard card shufflers. <laughs> and I can, I can shuffle my cards that way. As long as I lay hands on them, they're fine. Okay, here we go. 
I don't know how they want to come. So last night there were chunks of cards just flying out of the deck. Not sure that's how they're going to come this time. I'm sort of waiting for that message to stop. I just heard stop. Now which one am I supposed to take? He said the right hand. Do I cut? He said no. Wow! Okay. The tower card. The end of something that absolutely was necessary. Now, in this image, let's take a look. The tower is flipped on its head. It's completely split in half. It's pulled off the foundation. Uh, these people, this guy is definitely dead. So we know that one person doesn't survive the tower. And it doesn't mean an actual death. It means that one person will have emotionally survived the trauma. That's this person here. Because they're trying to pull themselves up. So we have someone here trying to pull themselves up after a disaster. But one person, really, they lost their crown. If you see their crown is here, it's next to them. Their crown is even upside down, which means they're, they're, they're incredibly confused by the ending. So what we have here is one person really pulling themselves together after a disastrous ending and another person really not handling a loss so well. Everything in here is upside down. Uh, so this is a situation that not only got blasted the hell off the ground, but it ended up upside down and someone in the situation is not going to uh, deal with an ending so well. And that's on a collective. So uh, in general, I can say we may actually experience more of these things happening on a collective, maybe international, universal level. And I, I hate that kind of prediction coming at me. So with the Gilded Tarot, we're okay. But we know that after the Tower, there is also... Uh, that uh, feeling of rebirth. The devil. For some of you, you're going to see these changes coming during the season of Capricorn. Okay? The devil. Now, look at these people in this card of obsession. It's a card of attachment. Codependency. Uh, an unnatural attachment to something that has a detrimental effect on you and those around you. And maybe this is the situation that we're bringing to an end. Now, this may, again, this may be an ending that you experience during the season, Cap season of Capricorn, which is absolutely right smack dab now, if not. This is something coming up in 2017 that for some of you is going to be an, ex an obsession like Pokemon, whatever the hell it was. But it's going to be something that controls your life. And if you look at this card, the two people that were once chained at the devil's side are now rolling around in the dirt together. Okay? So this is, frankly, whoever this is concerning. If you've got this kind of negative energy around you, whether it's an obsession an addiction, whatever it is, that person just doesn't give a shit. Do you see that? These two people, they don't give a shit that you're looking at them rolling around in the dirt. They're actually quite happy to do it. So that person, whoever this is bringing this situation into your life in 2017, 
that you are frankly looking for an ending with, that energy certainly does not care about anybody but themselves, frankly. And they are actually, I think, the person who this tower may be ending for. Okay. The Seven of Cups. We have to discuss this one. Because it talks about confusion in love. Emotional confusion. Maybe not knowing who to choose what to choose, where to choose, but there is something here that is confusing. Now, when we break it down, what we have here is someone who has stopped looking at what's confused them. They've made a choice. The right choice is still sitting here. He didn't bother with the right choice. The choice he made was to steal all the good shit and he's got a snake wrapped around his waist, which tells me that he is absolutely wrapped up in this obsession. Some of you are going to be dealing with a very, very negative energy in 2017. That is not what we wanted to hear. If you live in the U.S., this is us, okay? If you live in the U.S., this represents us. Number one, a very confused nation. You had many choices, but you left the right, the, you left the wrong choice behind. <clears throat> and what you took was a thief who is obsessed with themselves. This is my narcissist card. I'm calling this one. And forever after, this is going to be my narcissist card. Hard word to say when you're dealing with a dental apparatus in your mouth. I am wearing a bit of a retainer system to try to keep things from deteriorating any further. But enough about me. If I slur a little bit, it's new and it's kind of ill-fitted. So, what we're dealing with here is someone or a collective energy that had a choice. This can be Brexit on an international level. This can be those people who voted for Bibi Netanyahu and now regret it. Okay, this is about on a collective the narcissist card. Now, we like the energy, we like the fact that this political creepazoid here, I've always called him my trump card, by the way. Now, he definitely is my trump card. Because look at he's screwing us. He is literally going to screw us and not give a shit. Somebody's going to figure out a way to end that situation. Or I think there may be at some point during the year, and I'm going to make a political statement right here, I am going to predict, predict at least by 2018 sometime. <laughs> the 8, see, the 8, 5, 6, 7, 17. Maybe even 2017, we may be looking at um, impeachment proceedings. Let's see what the next card says. <laughs> the Ace of Wands is here again. So we're looking at this new beginning. Now, I don't want this to turn into a political statement. So I'm just going to say on a general level, whoever is dealing with, with this negative shit right here, you're going to be looking for a new way of doing things, a new beginning, a new place maybe, a new home. 
for those of you <laughs> who have contemplated leaving the U.S. like me because of our choice in president, I'd say you may even go deeper and think a little bit harder about that choice. This is about wanting something new. If this is a personal situation, this is you wanting to walk away from all of this pain and start over again. And maybe this partner was a poor choice, okay? Maybe this partner was a really bad place for you to go. And now you're thinking, I should, I should have done something else, or I need to walk a new path in order to leave this kind of nonsense behind. the Knight of Cups. He delivers it. Now, if you look on this card, this Ace of Wands, the Ace is now, or the Ace is now planted. Okay, it's now firmly in the ground. And the hand now holds a chameleon. Okay, what the chameleon does is he adapts himself to all scenarios. He can change himself at will. He can change directions at will. He can look differently at will. He has a lot of ability to be flexible and to change himself and his direction at will. And I really hope that this is who, for whoever is going through this negative stage right here. I certainly hope that this is where you're going with this. Now we have the Knight of Cups. Now, if you look at this knight, he's drinking. He's drinking the wine. He is drunk on the emotion. So when this knight makes his offer of love, he is overwhelmed with it. He has consumed it. It is part of who he, he is. And he is... Um, dripping with emotion. He is drunk by it. And so there may be an offer, something new, a new offer of love and passion. After the collapse of a situation for some of you that had to come to an end. But this is a much better uh, offer, but just know that this is highly emotional. And if you are not a highly emotional person, this may not be for you because this night is overwhelmingly filled with emotion. Now, the Ten of Pentacles is here, which is saying that during 2017, it looks like money is going to get better for a lot of you. Because we're reading on a collective. This is saying that for some of you, your finances are going to get much better. But this is like other people's money. Uh, stocks, bonds, inheritances, uh, money from institutions. But this is enough to be shared. Because if you see this little boy, he's even giving a pentacle to his dog. So there is enough wealth to go around here. And we can see actually a symbol for travel, for royalty. This shows two people looking at that old house and wondering, okay, what can we do to improve it? To improve it? So this is about improvements coming for some of you on a more financial level. And we already said that in this reading. We already said that, that we had uh, riches and something new coming in as far as finances goes. That's good news. And the world is here again. All right. So this is what it's all about. It's about ending these cycles and beginning these. 
uh, in this, this woman actually has not changed very much. But you notice, she's fatter. She's fatter, which means she's being fed well. She's being nourished. She's healthy. She's got vibrance. She's zoptic and sexy. And she's really very self-satisfied. If you look at the contentment on her face, she's very much at peace with the cycles that her life is going through. After a point of really kind of uh, disastrous uh, time in her life, this figure is getting fat and happy. Content. Satisfied with the choices and the movement that has come about for her. Well, the Page of Swords. And I have to say that what I noticed the most out of this is the three people in the background. This young energy can be defiant and hasty and angry and it can sometimes disrespect authority. But we have these three people in the background, can be friends, can be family. This doesn't have to be a person. It can be. But this person brings a bit of anger and disappointment with them. This can also represent an energy, but this is usually comes in a message of some kind, a letter, a communication. And maybe sometimes this communication can bring a little bit of sorrow with it. So maybe something is coming up for some of you. Maybe this is a divorce, okay? Maybe it's a divorce from a situation that needed to come down. And sometimes this can just bring an element of a message that's disconcerting. Um, maybe it brings a message of anger, or divisiveness in some way, but at some point there may be a disappointment or just a moment of mental anguish or sadness, possibly over this ending here, or the fact that this guy, this narcissist, had the nerve to make the wrong choice he walked away with, you know, whatever he could steal, but that's all he's got. Because he made the wrong choice, and it was an emotional choice. So, I think all of this is talking about breaking away from this. Amen. More says some of you have got the whole world in your hand, okay? Because this hand not, has put the cup down because it's flowed. The water here, the emotion has flowed, and now you're holding your, hand, your heart in your hand. So some of you are going to be very much in love, and there's a sense of peace with that. There's also a sense of spirituality because the dove holds a sacred host in his mouth, which tells me this is a sacred union brought by spirit. You will hold it very deeply and dearly to your heart. And um, this is the water already, the, the emotion. The emotion already flowing. So for some of you, the ending of one thing 
is going to bring in the beginning of something brand new. Wow, for some of you, that brand new is going to be some babies. Some of you are going to get pregnant. 2017 looks like the year for some of you. I see this lady has three little ducklings at her feet. Maybe this is you finding out that you're actually expecting twins. Um... This mama duck is all about nurturing. She's all about nurturing those around you. Now, for some of you, like I said, this is going to be babies coming up in 2017. It's going to be a, a more abundant life. A better life. Maybe a home in the country for some of you that are wanting to take some of that inheritance money and move to the country. Um, or travel. But there's a real sense of flow and abundance with this uh, card. She uh, very much... She is very, very happy and pleased with the course that her life has taken. It's very grounded, very natural. Um, maybe some of you are going to get married and have kids this year. That's a really good possibility for some of you if that's what you're looking for. Now the lovers is here. Now I want to say that our lovers may have been here. They may have been these two people rolling around in the mud as if they were actually an affair to me. Because now with the lovers card, I think some of you, and this is going to be a very small number of you, but some of you are releasing a spouse that uh, maybe not just had one, two, three, but maybe seven, eight affairs going. Maybe at different times, God. <laughs> maybe not all at once, but maybe some of you have decided to leave someone who totally disrespected your marriage vows. Now in this card. This is really interesting because our angel, our divine here, is holding the sword. So that tells me the divine knows that justice needs to be served for this couple. Now, either he has offered her an apple or she's offering it to him, but she's under the apple tree. So this may be her offering an apple to him. It looks like he's accepting it. And with the snake sprawled out under their feet, I think this was a very, almost an openly, uh, I don't want to use affair, but I think affair is the only word that's coming to me. A well, even relationship just isn't strong enough. So what we have here is the feeling that there was an affair here and that there was a release or that spirit is saying that there's something about this situation that needs to change for some of you in 2017. And spirit has the sword. So if some of you are leaving a situation where there has been betrayal, spirit is releasing you from that because you've got divine love coming your way. You've got divine love. It comes in not only with the Empress of the World, you've got this kind of satisfaction that comes with family money, inherited money, 
And maybe this is some of you marrying someone who's really quite well off. I'm just going to say it. I'm going to put it out there. Greed isn't good, but what the F, guys. Some of you are going to end up marrying somebody who's really uh, quite well off. Now, after you've left a situation where there was betrayal, a betrayal so deep that spirit needed to be here to remove it. One more. The King of Pentacles. Well, for some of you, it's going to be an Earth Sign King or an Earth Sign in general. It doesn't have to be a male. It can be a female. Depending on what side of sexuality you stand on, you will put that person where they belong. And like I said, I think some of you may actually be marrying someone quite wealthy or meeting, falling in love with someone quite wealthy because this King of Pentacles, he does very well. Now, here, he is represented big time by this bull. So right now, I'm going to say some of you guys are dealing with a Taurus. Right out of the gate, some of you are dealing with a Taurus. If this isn't a Taurus, this is someone who is incredibly stable, incredibly um, secure. Wealthy, yes, but secure in everything he does. He's also very much in command. He's very much in control of his temperament. I'm hearing the word temperament. Because we know bulls, you know, you got to antagonize a bull to get him to charge. But once he does, you're a dead man. Okay? So this king is probably really well-tempered really even tempered but there's kind of a warning here that says don't get him riled up because he's this bull he comes through here very much in control of his temperament until you get him riled up and then he will like it feels like he will take you out this can be an earth energy capricorn or a virgo also since taurus we know is the third Earth sign in the element. Now, uh, more than anything, 2017 looks like it might bring security, balance, harmony, uh, joy, money. Money, money, money. But real good things coming, but something needs to be left behind. And that, I think, is why this is your primary focus. Because once you fulfill this primary focus, You've got celebration, the Three of Cups. Now, in this card, these women are really overjoyed because they have, they're, they have literally jumped off the ground. They are celebrating. They're jumping up and down with joy. So this is not only a very happy situation. This is overjoyed. This is over the moon absolutely thrilled. These women have taken their cups and raised these great big cups over their heads. This is real joy. It's pure joy. It's, a, it's being ecstatic over something. And I want to hope that it's being ecstatic here after this crap comes to an end. This actually, in this situation, I can say that this is not only a, a, an affair that went bad, that ended badly for someone, may have ended them in the divorce court, but this is justice also being served up for two people who are now seeking love after an ending. So this is releasing of the old 
and welcoming in the brand new, not only on an emotional level, but also on a physical level. So I really think the After Tarot today wanted to talk about love. What is coming up for love? That over there, my dear friends, wanted to talk about what is coming up for business. No reading for the fool today. This actually turned out to be a collective reading uh, for my readers 2017, or my subscribers rather, for 2017. I really think that some of you guys, and you know who you are, and you know that I know who you are, you're going through some rough shit this year, guys, and uh, I think I'll be back New Year's Eve and we'll do another reading to welcome in the new year. Um, if you want a reading meant just for you, we're just going to leave this one where it's at for now. If you want a reading meant just for yourself, go to my Weebly webpage. Tell me what it is that you want and I'll get back to you. Um... The contact form. Use the contact form. Now, guys, I'm going to throw out this quick message. Number one, you don't need to give me bi your biography right away. Once you pay your invoice, then you can write your story. Tell me what you need me to know, but try to keep it down because too much information can be too much information. Uh, also, if you want to look at some energy and love readings that I have over, over at my Vimeo channel, you can go over there and take a look. I'm starting up new with some new stuff, uh, new interesting stuff like I was doing last year. I'm going to be doing those again over at Vimeo. Those will be coming at you after the first of the year, too. I'll leave the link for Vimeo down below. Until the next time, guys, please, please, please be well. Have a happy new year. You're going to rise up out of some stuff that's negative, some of you. Some of you are looking at big, big advances financially and with love. But like I said, this is all collective, guys. Until the next time, uh, take care of yourselves, take care of one another, and peace.